Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at how to use LDAP servers and RADIUS servers to authenticate against Palo Alto firewall. So you can use those LDAP and RADIUS servers to log into the Palo Alto. In my previous video, I covered how to leverage Palo Alto local user database. So you can use that database to add your administrators and users so they can authenticate against your Palo Alto firewall to login purposes. In this video, I'm going to cover the RADIUS and LDAP because if you have so many users in your organization, you already have an authentication server which is RADIUS or LDAP so you can leverage those existing databases to authenticate against Palo Alto firewall so administrators can log into the Palo Alto firewall to do the administrative work. If you haven't watched my previous video about the local user database, I would encourage you to go and watch that video before this video. But if you are not going to use the local database and if you decide to use uh, LDAP and RADIUS, you can keep watching this video. So let's look at how to use your LDAP server for authentication purpose with Palo Alto Firewall. To do that, go to devices and go to server profile and click on LDAP, click add, and you need to give a profile name. I'm going to say LDAP server auth profile and add your LDAP server here. For name, I'm going to put the LDAP server name, ldap.paun.lab, and you have to put the IP address, 192.168.50.89, and the port is going to be 389, which is the default LDAP server port. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to keep the other for server type, but this can vary depending on your setup. If you have an Active Directory, you can use Active Directory or you can use these ones based on your LDAP server. I'm going to keep it the type as other. For base DN, I'm going to type in DC equal PANW comma DC equal lab and bind dn i'm going to type in cn equal admin comma dc equal p a n w comma dc equal lab these settings differ based on your ldap server settings and this is the ldap server authentication password I'm going to uncheck this one for now, require SSL TSL secure connection because I don't have that for the lab server. Click OK. Now you have created the LDAP server profile and now you are going to create an authentication profile and reference the LDAP server profile within it. So let's go to the authentication profile. Click add LDAP auth profile type LDAP. I'm going to keep seven days as a notification. And now I go to advanced and I'm going to allow all users. That means any user from LDAP server coming in for auth are allowed, but you can limit them to certain users based on what you have available here in your LDAP server. But I'm going to keep it all for this demo and I have not defined the server profile here you need to go here and click what you have defined for server profile now the OK button is active click OK so now you have defined two things one is the LDAP server profile and you are using the server profile into your authentication profile now I am going to go to the administrator section and going to define the users here. Admin Sally and I'm going to say use the LDAP authentication profile. So these are like a cascade 
things. Administrator accounts using authentication profile, authentication profile using the server profile. So these three are linked together. So if I don't define the authentication profile here, you need to define username and password. If you define the authentication profile, it's going to take the username and password, which is already defined in the LDAP server. So it's going to be a super user because admin Sally is a network admin. So let's do the same kind of configuration for my radius profile, and we can go and test the LDAP user and the radius user. Let's go back to the server profile and go to uh, radius, click add, radius server profile. I'm going to use the CHAP authentication protocol and I'm going to add the radius server, radius PA and w dot lab and this is the ip address of the radius server 192 160 50 150 i'm going to enter the secret here that is used by the palo alto to communicate with the radius server it is going to use the standard radius port that is 1812 Click OK. Now I'm going to go to the authentication profile. Click Add. I'm going to add the radius auth profile for type radius. Server profile is going to be radius server profile that I defined before. Go to Advanced. Add all users from radius. Click OK. Now I'm going to go to the administrator section, define a radius admin. I'm going to say use the radius authentication profile, super user. Okay, now both radius and LDAP has been set up properly. I'm going to commit the change. Commit successful. Let's log out and log in as a Radius user and a LDAP user. Let's log in as an LDAP admin first. Admin Sally. Let's log in as Radius user first. Okay, that worked. I was not able to log in as Admin Sally. And the reason is the server name is wrong. Let's do this one, P-A-N-W. So any typo can cause problems. So be careful when you type in the names and IP addresses of the servers. So let's try again the LDAP authentication. now it is working so if you make a typo things doesn't work so you need to be very careful when you set up these parameters finally let's go to the monitor and see the system lock for these authentications you can see ldap auth authentication for user admin sally auth profile this one this one so this is successful auth success and uh, you will see another one, admin Helga auth is radius that is also successful. So you can use this system monitor to find out who is authenticating against your firewall. You also can use APIs also for these logins. So every environment is different, but this video is just a simple explanation of how you can use LDAP and Radius for Palo Alto authentication. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification.